Hi there, this is Farmer Fudge. Um, what I'm going to do here is purely an experiment about whether you can reuse a test strip for one of the blood glucose meters. Um, it's just an experiment, I'm not saying it's right or wrong, I'm not telling people to do this or whether you can trust the results, I just want to see what will happen when we reuse a test strip. So what I've got here, I call this the kind of minority report approach, I've got five normal functioning uh, freestyle light uh, meters. I've also got one, my current one, which I use day in day out, uh, also functioning to my knowledge, uh, which I'm going to test against with a clean test strip, which will come out of this pot here. These are all in date, by the way. Um, all that, the other things I'm going to do is, this is a bunch of uh, used test strips, so they've already got some dry blood caked on it. I've got some boiled cold water here to clean them, and just some regular toilet roll to do that cleaning. Uh, and in a second I'm going to crack one of these open, well actually going to crack open five, one for each of these. And I'll use a normal clean test strip to test against, we'll see what kind of readings we come back with. Okay, just to explain the next step here, I've taken uh, five used test strips and I've literally torn them apart. You can do that with any test strip and then it reveals the circuitry underneath. Um, I'm going to go into what chemicals uh, are used to make these later on. I have no working knowledge of chemistry or physics or anything like that, but I'll just explain what uh, I found out is in them anyway. And so the next step is I'm going to apply some cold, boiled water to these test strips just to clean off the dry blood. Okay, I've cleaned all these ones down with some water. I've dried them off with a hairdryer, not very intensely. Uh, and now I've put them back together again and inserted them all into the test meters. As you can see, they're all eager to go, so I'm going to take a blood sample now. Okay, so I've pricked my finger. I have a blood sample here ready to go. Let's see what these boys say. Okay, this is going to be a bit tricky filming this. There we go. First one. Second one. Third one. Oh, running out of blood. Come on. Fourth one. Squeeze a bit more blood out. Oh, we've got an error, have we? Now we've got a result coming out. <laughs> Just can't get enough blood out of these. <laughs> there we go. Right, so everybody's got some blood. Let's have a look at what they say. So we got 7.4 on that side, number 1, 5.3 number 2, 10.4 number 3, 4.4 number 4, and we're still waiting number 5, might never get there. Oh, 7.9, which is very similar to the first one. Right, so I'm going to crack open a proper one now, straight out of the tube, this is clean, I've never used one, uh, this one before. That's going into my normal everyday meter. Um, they're all normal everyday meters, I should point that out. This is one I actually used today and uh, wherever I am. So here we are, it's in my pouch. So this should be the right one. Oh, come on. Sorry, I'm running out of blood again. All right, there we go. Let's see what this says. Oh, 1.8. That's very low. So these are nowhere near it. Um, quite interesting. So obviously I'm having a hypo. Uh, the nearest one is actually number four. So it just goes to show, I think, in reality, that you cannot reuse these test strips. They're not going to give you an accurate meter reading. Um, I'm just going to give you a slide in a second about the kind of chemical makeup of these, just for information. Right, just a bit of an update. Off the back of that result, that rather worrying hypo, I've just tested against my other everyday meter, um, which is coming at a 6. So now I really don't know what to believe, to be honest. These are my two functioning everyday meters that I have in my pouches, I alternate between. Uh, two very different readings. The second one here, uh, on the fresh test strip, is looking nearer to what these guys over here said than this one over here, so now I'm questioning this one. <laughs> I don't know where this is going to end, to be honest. Right, this is the uh, science bit of uh, the blood test thing. Um, this is the stuff I've found out from uh, searching on the internet. So, hopefully, this will 
There we go. Right, so this is a test strip. Uh, yeah, it's a freestyle test strip. It could be probably any test strip, but this is the one we've chosen. Um, so you add a blood drop, and then um, that um, adds what's called chemical glucose oxidate when it goes into the blood strip initially. Together they form what's called gluconic acid. This plus another third party chemical called ferrocyanide come together to form ferrocyanide. Not the difference between ferrocyanide and ferrocyanide is the difference here. And then what happens in the meter is it passes electrical current through. And that gives you the kind of um, a kind of tolerance reading, uh, a resistance reading, perhaps if you like, on uh, on the blood, and that equals your mmol L kind of reading. Uh, in this case, it's ten point five, but um, obviously in the American kind of system, it's slightly different. So that's what's going on in the background when you drop a piece of blood into a test strip.